Okay, so it's, it's really going to be a love letter to the Apache Foundation. Um, so, as Rich was explaining, my name is Nithya Ruff, and I've been working in open source, it feels like forever. But when I really calculated it, it's almost the same time as the Apache Foundation was founded, was when I started working in open source. So let me start with telling you my open source journey. It was back in um, 1998. Wow, I've been in this industry so long. Um, it was at SGI, and SGI was moving from proprietary hardware and software to a more standards-based open source and you know, Microsoft NT on uh, Intel servers. And I was part of the team that was working on the open source strategy. So how do we work with the community? And uh, what patches do we give back? You know, how do we bring parity between IREX and Linux? And, and so on and so forth, and how do we make money, and you know, simple things like that. So this was a fantastic experience for me because it really gave me a taste of open source during the early days. Remember the IBM love, peace, and open source campaign? We were all trying to figure out how to work with open source as companies. And since then, my journey has been that I've had a chance to build bridges between companies and communities, and communities and companies. And that's been the role that I've been playing at Tripwire, which is a security company, uh, where we open source Tripwire, for example. And then uh, at Wind River Systems, which is a subsidiary of Intel's, I had a chance to work on the Octo project and take it to market. And then um, moved to Western Digital, where I had a chance to start the Western Digital's open source office. And frankly, with more and more companies going to open source, companies are starting open source program offices, very similar to what Jim does, what I do. And the other half of my personality and my passions has been around diversity and inclusion in open source. So you'll see me advocating and being an ally and a champion for diversity in such organizations as uh, Women of OpenStack or at the Linux Foundation's Women in Open Source and I have the good fortune of also sitting on the board of the Linux Foundation and Codechicks to really attract, retain, and develop uh, new developers, new contributors to open source in general. So that brings me to my Comcast role. I just joined Comcast in January of this year. And you know, one of the questions I often get asked is, um, Comcast and open source? Uh, what are you doing at Comcast? I didn't know. Comcast have an open source office. And do they actually create software? Do they work in software? And, and my most favorite question is, do I get free cable? And do I get free internet? And uh, guess what? I do. And I love it. And I can also help you solve your cable issues. I can you know, call the magic number and help you with your cable. So let me talk about Comcast transformation into a software organization. I think it was around the year 2000 when, like many companies, we were consuming off-the-shelf proprietary hardware software. We were totally dependent upon external third-party vendors. We were dependent upon them for support. We were dependent upon them for innovation. We would often provide detailed requirements to these vendors, and we'd wait with you know, waiting on them to deliver on those requirements. And then it was around 2006, 2007, we realized that we could actually take these requirements and start working on it ourselves. And this was also about the same time that open source was more mature, um, was really innovating in many of the areas that we cared about. And this was an opportunity for us to take code, and it really empowered us to start using the code to create our own solutions, to build our own infrastructure, to deliver innovation and services to our customers. And then between 2006 and 2017, a lot of the developers in the company would say, I want to give this code back. If I make changes, I want to put it back. Because it's the right thing to do. It also helps me not carry technical debt. It's good for the company, and it's good for the community. And, and frankly, we are doing some really smart things at scale that others probably can benefit from. 
And so you found that a number of people wanted to give back. And the company then was smart enough to set up an open source advisory council and start approving these contributions, changing the way we do business inside the company and making that possible. So today, when I entered the company, I came into this magical place. Truly, it is a magical place inside the company where uh, people are really committed to working in open source, using open source, developing, contributing back. It's one of the largest GitHub installations I've seen. It's one of the largest Slack channels I've seen. And, um, and frankly, my job is easy because I get to enable that transformation. I get to support that transformation as an open source program office. So let me give you an example of uh, one of the transformations that's happened. How many of you use X1 um, in your homes? Okay. It's a different experience altogether, isn't it? I, I love my X1. All I have to say is Game of Thrones, and it finds me my Game of Thrones episode, right? So I don't have to go getting to Netflix and then finding my, or HBO and finding my episode, etc. So it's very, very easy. So the X1 operating system was created about the year 2012. And then as you can see, we started kind of taking uh, destiny into our own hands to transform the way people watch TV. Uh, from there, we went to streaming, because more and more of us are streaming media on our phones, on our laptops, etc. Right before I traveled to Miami, I downloaded a number of episodes of the Tudor uh, episode on Showtime so that I could watch it on um, United. And, and frankly, then we went to broadband. And behind all this is really a very, very dynamic, multi-platform, multi-tenant, cloud-based application platform um, with a, a really strong IP broad base, uh, broadcast grade video delivery platform. Boy, that's a mouthful of words there to say. So as you can imagine, when you have to be innovative and customer value is an important thing that we want to deliver. When you charge customers money, you want to deliver them outstanding value where people say, yeah, I think I'm getting value for my money. And that's one of the things that we focus on. And in doing so, um, there are three goals that the technology and product group has which is build innovative products, build them in a reliable fashion, and build them securely. And in so doing, as you can see, we have to use and touch practically every innovative technology you can think of. Some of the things that my form, the previous two speakers talked about, we, dab, we use cloud, both public, private, and hybrid. We use IoT on the device side and the set-top box side. We use big data to analyze our streams. We use machine learning so that we can deliver better service to our customers. And then behind all this is a gigantic uh, network that delivers service to customers. And one of the things we found was that you know, all of these fancy technologies are exactly what the Apache Foundation focuses on. And when we started counting all of the Apache projects that we relied on as a company, by the way, this, I don't think this is complete because there are lots and lots of other projects that guys haven't even told me about. But, but we discovered that we were using practically every Apache project that there was out there. And um, it, it made us realize that we needed to increase our support, our love, our um, you know, sponsorship of Apache. And so this year we increased our sponsorship to the platinum level. And we're very, very proud. Um, <laughs> and frankly, this is thanks to champions inside the company. Um, Jan Van Duren is here. Um, you know Phil Storber, who is an Apache Foundation member. Um, it's also people like Jason Livingston, uh, uh, Living Good, rather, and also Matthew Bailey and others who have tirelessly convinced all of us that we must support Apache in a stronger way because we depend upon Apache so much. We 
you know, get so much good out of uh, the foundation and working with the foundation. So we do collaborate with other foundations as well, and I love the foundation model because it allows us to work in key technology areas with other companies in a very neutral um, way. And, and clearly, the Apache Foundation is central to our strategy and to our working um, in open source. Why do I love Apache? I think it's, it's like this big fish. When you have lots of little fishes all swimming together in unison and working harmoniously together, you become this gigantic force that overcomes all of the other small fishes out there. And I particularly liked, and I sat in the track today for the Apache Way uh, communications, and I was so inspired by the fact that the foundation spends so much time and energy investing in creating a common culture across all of the Apache projects. Whether it is paying attention to community, because good community, healthy communities create healthy code, or valuing all contributions equally, whether you're a documentation person or an evangelist or a code contributor, that you are valuable to creating this community. Uh, of course, world-class projects and respect for diversity. And, and last but not the least, this, this was always kind of puzzling to me that on the one hand, the Apache Foundation was so innovative and creative in its cultural thinking. And on the other hand, it was also equally pragmatic so you had both pragmatic as well as creative in the same organization. And we love the Apache 2.0 license, by the way. It, it, it favors and supports both companies as well as community, and we, we really like that. So I said it was a love letter. So here's uh, one of the projects that I wanted to highlight. The Apache traffic control is something um, Comcast is very, very proud to support. Um, it's used in our production facilities it is an incubation project with the Apache Foundation, and it's really helped us recruit a lot of uh, you know, really good developers. As you saw from the beginning, you know, most people don't know us as an open source friendly, a software company. And so when we started getting involved in the traffic control project, it really put us on the map as an open source company, and we, we appreciate that. And it's allowed us to also attract other companies who want to use it and grow non-Comcast committers. Because we do want to have a very diverse and vibrant community with this project. So please, I'm asking you, get involved. We are welcoming new contributors. We'd love to have you take a look at the project. Get involved in this. Jan tells me it was actually in 2012 when he started looking at this project. They were mainly um, very proprietary CDN control plane projects. And they weren't working with each other. Um, and it would force you into a vendor lock-in. So that's when he started working on the project. And he said, I purposely chose the Apache Foundation because I wanted a sustainable, long-term, community-friendly, healthy project. And, and this is where you build healthy projects. So big shout out to a couple of people. The gentleman in this picture, I think many of you may know, Phil uh, Sorber. Phil is an uh, Apache Foundation member, and he is constantly telling us inside the company on how to follow the Apache way. So it's so important to have a champion, I think, inside a company who really works hard to communicate what the foundation does, what the foundation way is, so that we can both transform ourselves inside the company as well as work with the foundation. And Jan von Dorn is sitting somewhere at the back, I thought. Um, Jan, there he is. He's really a visionary. He's the one who created the traffic control project. And other notable mentions here, Jeff, Derek, Mark, Steve, and Hank, not all work at Comcast, so we want to encourage more people to work with us. There are other projects that we contribute to and also original projects that we've put out on github.com slash comcast. Please check it out. There are about 85 repos, more than 10,000 commits. Clearly not as much as IBM or Intel or Samsung or others, but I want to show you that we're not 
what you think we are. We are a serious software company and we believe in open source. And, and what we can bring as both a user as well as a contributor to a project is that we work at scale. We are constantly innovating. We also do things in production. And so you can we bring that level of testing and that gravitas to the table and also running it on networks which serve millions of customers. So when we started the open source practice at Comcast, you say, gosh, you know, they, they are already doing open source, so why did, do they need to open an open source practice? I see my role as those six C's that you see in the diagram, and my job is really twofold. One, make it easy for this fantastic group of developers to do their work remove the obstacles in their way, whether it's legal or process or otherwise. And second, be visible in open source communities and be a part of those communities that we care about. Those are the two things I care about. And let me also talk about another thing that I care about. Um, it's diversity and inclusion in open source. Diversity of all kinds, diversity of global thought, diversity of gender, diversity of abilities, and thought and style, et cetera. It's, it's very simple. And we've all said this, there's a lot of digitization of companies happening. Software is eating the world. And open source is the way most of this software is being created and used. And so I think we already have a talent shortage and we, we will continue to have a bigger talent shortage at Comcast, but also in open source projects in general. And we need to learn how to attract retain and develop talent of all sorts. And, and frankly, inclusion often results in innovation because you have very different approaches coming together, taking a look at the same problem. And as the Apache Foundation has showed me today, inclusion does not happen by accident. It does not happen organically. It needs intention. It needs leadership attention. It needs people to be explicit about this as a goal and make it happen. And it smashes bias in systems. Talk about machine learning and biases that can creep in if you have just one way of thinking that feeds that machine learning or feeds that algorithm or feeds that system. Uh, and there are many, many studies that show that there is bias in systems when you have only one way of thinking feeding that system. So when you create diversity, it smashes the bias. And lastly, I, I throw a challenge to all of you. Become an ally. Become an advocate for inclusion. You can go to ncwit.com uh, org, or you can go to any place on the website and, and study what it means to be a supporter of inclusion and, and, uh, and an ally. And there are many people in this room who are allies, and, and I applaud you. So go reach out to them and, and see how you can be an ally. So I've got about two minutes and 37 seconds to tell you um, we are thrilled and happy to be an open source supporter at uh, Comcast. This is kind of the logo that we're trying to create and an identity around open source at Comcast. So you may see it on stickers. You saw it first. Don't tell anyone. And you may also see it in t-shirts and things like that. If you are intrigued by this talk, if you're intrigued by what we do at Comcast, you can check out github.com slash Comcast. You can follow me on Twitter. You can reach out to me. And yes, we are hiring. Thank you.